Hi, and welcome back to Hazmat Ops Training. I'm Joel. We're coming to you from the back lot of the studio here. Uh, today we're going to talk about placards. Uh, we talked about placards during our emergency response guidebook series, and I told you that we would go a little bit more in depth, and today we're going to do that. Stay right with us. Today we're going to see how DOT chart 16 uh, will help us to interpret uh, some information and gain some extra information on placards. Uh, this can be printed right off of the FEMSA website. I'll put the website down here at the bottom of the screen and I'll also put it in the description. We want chart 16 to be a supplement uh, to the emergency response guidebook. My recommendation is just print it off. It's PDF right there on the website. Stick it right in the emergency response guidebook. Put it right there on the rig, uh, in the, the car, in the truck, whatever the case may be for you. Uh, you'll ha always have it right there with you. Again, it's extra information that goes along with what we already know about the emergency response guidebook. As ops level responders, we're looking for hazard. We're looking for information on the hazard first. If we can get an idea about quantity, that's great, uh, but without shipping papers, uh, without the proper shipping name like we talked about in the ERG episodes, it's going to be hard uh, to do that. However, DOT uh, chart 16 uh, can give us a little bit of an idea about some minimum quantities uh, and then potentially we can make an estimation. Let's talk just a second about the general rule for placarding. So the Pipeline and Hazardous Material Safety Administration, or, or FEMSA for short, uh, defines the hazmat placarding rule as, and it's again, it's a general rule, uh, if a hazardous material is contained within a transport vehicle, bulk packaging, freight container, unit load device, or rail car, then proper placarding must be applied. As ops level responders, we're not looking for compliance. We're not looking to see if anybody's done anything wrong. We simply want to know what the hazard is and if we can estimate some sort of, of quantity that we might be dealing with. We're looking for indicators. Now let's look at some of the sections of DOT chart number 16. You'll see right here on the very first page down here at the bottom, you have some hazardous materials marking. I've got my 1A2 drum here as an example uh, for some of the markings that we see. We'll talk about the labels in just a minute. That's actually in the next section. But you see some of the other markings like the orientation marking, very, very common on secondary containers or non-bulk containers. We'll talk in just a few minutes as well about bulk and non-bulk. This would be a good example of a non-bulk container, uh, but we do have an orientation. We also have uh, a label here, and I'll turn it so you can see it a little bit better, uh, for cargo aircraft only. That's not to say that this drum has to be carried on, on a cargo aircraft. It's saying that if it is carried on an aircraft, it must be a cargo only. It can't be carried on an aircraft that's also carrying passengers. We have a few other labels that are applied uh, by the shipper uh, for medical uh, supplies here. Uh, you got the, the Red Cross. Uh, that's actually not on DOT chart 16. It's an indicator from the shipper that this is medical supplies. Uh, you got some other markings, uh, again, that are just talking about quantity. This drum had 200 of these little guys uh, in it from the, the shipper. Uh, so it was a pretty good way, a very uh, secure way uh, to transport. This is a, a flammable liquid. It's hand sanitizer, so it is a flammable liquid, so it, it does meet the criteria for the shipping. On the second page of DOT chart uh, 16, you'll see uh, our hazardous materials warning labels. This is very, very similar to our placards, uh, but for secondary containers like our 1A2 uh, drum here, and what I mean by 1A2, that's, that's the spec number. Uh, just like any of our tankers, just like any other type of container, this does have a spec number. 1A2 uh, is what we're talking about here. The 1 stands for uh, that it's a drum. A stands for it's made of steel, uh, and two, the two is uh, for a, a, an open top drum, uh, and if it was a 1A1, it would be a closed top drum. Uh, you can find uh, all those specifications on the internet. There's a ton of, of different sites out there that you can find that. So this is a 1A2 spec. Uh, that's the reason I'm, I'm referring to it there. Uh, but you can see here uh, it's a flammable liquid is what we're carrying. I uh, got the three down in the bottom. Again, the label's very, very similar uh, to what our placards are going to look like. And then we're going to talk about placards next. 
we'll go in the studio in just a minute and we'll talk about uh, more in depth on DOT chart 16, but just for some general reference, uh, on the third page, you'll see our hazardous materials warning placards. Uh, so it gives you an idea of all the different nine hazard classes and a number of different examples. DOT chart 16 does an excellent job of giving us really good examples of, of what we're, we're subject to find out here on the highway, on the rail, uh, and in other places where we might find hazardous materials. Join me inside in the studio and we'll break down the rest of the chart. Hi and welcome to the studio. Uh, I told you it would be just a few minutes. It's actually been two weeks. Uh, hopefully you've had time to grab your 2020 emergency response guidebook as well as your DOT chart 16. Remember I told you you can print it off the FEMSA website which is in the, the uh, description. Uh, just stick it right in there. That sits right there in the console of the vehicle. Um, in the door pocket, wherever the case may be for you. So we said outside that we were uh, going to break down the FEMSA general rule for placarding. So I want to read that again. The general rule is if a hazardous materials is contained within a transport vehicle, bulk packaging, freight container, unit load device, or rail car, then proper placarding must be applied. So we're going to break that down. So the first thing is, is the hazardous materials contained within a transport vehicle. So this is what we're talking about. Uh, the highway containers uh, that you see on the left here. Uh, the, again, we're talking about a dry van trailer uh, in a lot of cases that have secondary containers in them. They could have small containers, they could have bulk containers. There's a lot of things they could have. Uh, you see in the upper right here, uh, containers, uh, intermodal containers uh, that are being uh, shipped on a train. Also the bottom right, intermodal containers on a ship uh, and then the unit load devices that we're talking about and we'll we'll point that out a little little further as we go uh, for aircraft shipments as well next we're looking at bulk packaging uh, and freight containers so the definition for bulk packaging is for liquid materials we're talking about greater than 119 gallons now incidentally that comes into play around about a thousand pounds. That'll come into uh, to be a little bit more important as we go. Uh, but for liquid materials, 119 gallons. For solid materials, the 119 gallons must apply as well for liquid capacity, but for solid materials, bulk packaging, beyond that we're talking about, uh, additionally we're talking about 882 pounds for solid materials. And then for gases greater than a thousand pounds of liquid capacity for gas materials. You'll see here a couple of examples of bulk containers. In the upper right hand corner is an example of an intermediate bulk container uh, that's also known as a tote. You can see those in different variations. You see a, a poly tote here uh, with that metal cage around it for some stability. Uh, you can also see those made out of stainless steel and a, a number of other materials. A lot of times now you'll see that heavy plastic material. Uh, those are getting uh, really, really popular and have been for a while. You'll see at the bottom here, uh, these are an, another example of bulk containers uh, that are also being carried in a fancy uh, intermodal type of uh, a container there as well. That, that can, is, is ex the example here, uh, it's being carried on a flat trailer, uh, can also be put on a ship, it can be put on a train. Uh, there's a lot of different uses for those intermodals, and we'll look at those in other episodes. Uh, but these four containers that, that are inside of this intermodal uh, transporter uh, are the bulk containers that we're referring to. These are just a couple of examples of bulk containers. There's a number of things out there, and I would encourage you to study up and, and find some other examples you may have in your response area. This is an example here of the bulk packaging as the freight container. You see the bottom example here is the DOT 406 tanker. Uh, that's the workhorse of the petroleum industry. Uh, it's a good example here. Uh, and also a rail, a rail car uh, here in the top of the screen. And then a unit load device. Uh, a lot of folks may not be familiar with a unit load device. Uh, here right in the middle of the screen you see the, the big silver uh, containers that they're loading onto the aircraft. Uh, those are, are what are referred to as a unit load device. Now remember, hazardous materials can be transported by air, uh, so they can be transported by highway, rail, uh, sea, and air. 
Uh, there are a number of restrictions, but air transport of hazardous materials is allowed. So again, I'm hoping that you've printed off the DOT chart 16 from the FEMSA website. I'd like for you to follow along with me. It may be a little bit difficult uh, to see on the screen if you have that printed copy that you need to have in your 2020 Emergency Response Guidebook. Uh, that'll be good to, to have handy right now. So you'll see here we're actually on the third page of DOT chart 16, uh, which is illustrating our placards. Now the second page is for our labels for secondary containers. Here's one of the things I, I like best about DOT chart 16 and how it can help us in the field. Uh, you'll see an example of all nine hazard classes as well as the dangerous placard and we'll talk about it in just a minute. In some cases where the hazard class is in the bottom of the placard, you'll see the actual division number. In the case here, you'll see for oxidizers, you'll see 5.1. For explosives, you'll see 1.4, 1.5, 1.6. So it's a good example there. The thing that I really like the most is the description. So there, I told you before, for every rule, and we talked about the general rule for placarding, and for every rule in the hazmat world, there's 10 exceptions. Uh, so, not really, but you, you know what I'm talking about. There's a number of exceptions out there. So, the, the DOT chart 16 does a great job of giving us some description about what types and this, some of these divisions that may be placarded in any quantity. Uh, and you'll see that a number of these must be placarded over or, or greater than 1,001 pounds. That's where table one and table two will come into play. Let's look at a couple of more things on the placard here and then we'll look at our table one and table two materials. Again, there's a number of really good examples of the placards that we'll see here along with our descriptions. And you'll see the very last one to the right there is our dangerous placard. You can read right along. The dangerous placard allows multiple table two materials to be placarded under the dangerous placard until a single shipment over 2,205 pounds is loaded and then the individual material specific placard must be used. So here on the last page, you'll see to the left side uh, our placarding table. So we have a table one and a table two. So our table one materials must be placarded in any quantity. Why is that? Quite simply, it's hazard. These materials, due to their inherent nature, have to be placarded in any quantity. And then our table two materials, here we're talking about our non-bulk containers where the shipment equals greater than 1,001 pounds on that transport vehicle. As I've said before, DOT Chart 16 is a great tool, but it's simply that, it's a tool. It's not a silver bullet. It's not gonna tell us everything that we wanna know. It's a tool in the toolbox to help us analyze information, to help us analyze hazards, and to make good informed decisions. Remember to take this information, combine it with your agency's policies and procedures, and stay safe. Hey, thanks for being with us today. Remember to like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next episode.